Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the part two of Compute Lesson 200. Uh, my name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the technical enablement team and we're gonna talk about instance configurations and pools. So um, to give you an overview of instance configuration and pool, uh, instance configuration is um, something that you can use to actually replicate uh, an instance. And what I mean by replicate, there's a few ways you can do replications of an instance inside of OCI. When I mean replicate, I mean you want to create a secondary instance that's exactly the same that instance that was up and running uh, on your environment. So you can do that, uh, for example, using custom image. You can just take a custom image of an instance where you're going to have all the information of the operating systems, all the application that you actually install inside of the operation system, all the configuration you did inside of the OS. Uh, when you do a custom image, you have the, all that information inside of that image. Instance configuration is a little bit different. So when you're creating an uh, instance configuration of that same running instance, you're actually getting what we I used to call the skeleton of the of the instance. So you're getting all the information that is associated to that specific instance. For example, all the operating system image, the, the image that we use to launch that instance, uh, the metadata, the shape that you selected when you when you created that, that instance, all the network, the VNIX associated to that, the storage, the amount of storage block associated to that instance, which subnet you actually place that instance, all, all that information that you actually in, in inject and input when you launch an instance uh, will be associated to that uh, instance configuration, okay? So why do I need an instance configuration? Why do I create an instance configuration of that? Well, with that information, when you created that instance configuration, with that information, it's easy for you to replicate multiple instances. What I'm saying now, I'm talking about now, is how you can hook up that to an instance pool. So using that configuration, you can deploy multiple instances. You can create um, two instances all the way to 10, you know, 20, 25, and you, you know, you decided what's the size of the pool uh, you want to go uh, when you're creating, um, uh, you know, your multiple instances. When you do that, you can po uh, post those. Uh, you can put those instances on different availability domains. So if you create a running instance on availability domain one, now you can deploy multiple instances spread across availability domains inside of the region. You can manage all that together, right? So you can stop, start, terminate all those instances at once. So you don't have to go one by one and execute operations like that. You can just you know, stop everyone, stop all the, all the instances or terminate all the instances uh, just with one single click, right? Uh, you can actually attach those instances to a load balancer. So if you're using an application uh, that uh, will be running behind a load balancer and you just want to scale your application horizontally and give more uh, instances to run, uh, you can increase the amount of the pool and then those instances will be automatically associated to the load balancer uh, that you, you defined uh, on the configuration, right? So in, in, to give you a, 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 a better idea is using instance configuration to collect that information of your running instance and then using the pool to multiply uh, that configuration and create multiple instances on your environment. So instance and configuration pool will be uh, one of the basics uh, for auto scaling. So we're going to uh, talk about that on the part three of the presentation. But this is really important for auto scaling uh, that we're going to uh, we're going to touch uh, later on. So here are some of the use cases for uh, instance configuration for instance pools. Right. So instance configuration is easy to clone. Right. If you need to clone an, an instance or you create multiple instances of that specific. Uh, you know, set of configuration you use when you launch the instance, it's easy to do that uh, using the configuration. It's really fast. Uh, if you're doing, for example, a custom image, you have a downtime that you have to um, afford in order to create that custom image. On instance configuration, that's not going to put your instances down. Uh, you can do that with the instance up and running live. It's just uh, creating a file with all the configuration associated to that, um, to that specific instance. So it's easy to automate. Uh, to create an automation if you're scripting, if you're using command line interface or even SDK to uh, create multiple instances, it's, it's really easy to use that uh, for uh, replicate your environment. Uh, 
So an instance pools, right? So you can manage everything together. Uh, you can get a, a pretty large number of instances uh, with just one single uh, instance configuration. Uh, you can distribute those instances across availability domains, so it's easy to cr create multiple instances at once and you spread those out uh, inside of the inside of OCI tenants, right? Uh, and of course, like I said before, that's going to be used as poor as part of the auto scaling policy. So you have to have an instance pool. Uh, configure it to actually use the audi scaling uh, portion okay so um, with that let's just give you a quick demo and show you how you can create an instance configuration for running instance how you create a pool uh, and then show you the moving parts and how you can uh, interact with that uh, on oci console all right so here's my oci account and i'm logged in here on my um, uh, on my instance page and I do have two instances up and running, one called VM01, VM02. And I'm going to select the VM02 here, which is up and running. Uh, as you can see, I have the information uh, of that instance. I have all the information about public IP, private IP, uh, if there's any network secret groups associated to that. Uh, the image that actually I used when I launched that instance, which is Oracle Linux 7.7. Uh, which availability domain, fault domain that I deploy, which subnet was associated uh, to, right? So to create an instance configuration is really easy. You can just go on an action and say create instance configuration. You can give it a name. I'm going to leave the name uh, as like that. So this is the timestamp of the, the creation. And we're going to say create, conf create instance configuration. And it's really fast. It's just created. Uh, now I have the information of my machine, right? So all the information that was saying the skeleton of my uh, instance is here. I can see the image, the shape, uh, the, the boot volume size that I use it. Uh, all that information is showing up here. Okay. So from here, I can create an instance pool. Now that I have the configuration ready, I can create an instance pool from that specific uh, instance configuration. So now I have to select the number of instances. Um, and this is the amount of instances you want to create based on that configuration. Uh, remember, you have to respect the, the service limits of your tenancy and also for the compute quota. So if you have a compute quota set up for your uh, compartment, for your region, uh, you also have to respect that. Okay. So I'm going to say I want to use uh, three uh, uh, instances. Right, and I want to say I want to attach that to a load balancer, and I'm going to select a load balancer here that I have created on port 80, and this is how we do uh, which availability domain I want to place those instances. So I have a availability domain one. I can put every have all the machines there. Uh, and I can select the, VC, the virtual cloud network and the subnet that I want to place that uh, uh, one of the my machines. So I want to use the public subnet region for that. Um, I can add another availability domain, right? So we can say I want to place uh, on AD2 and put everything here on AD2 as well and select the, the public um, regional subnet. I can also add uh, AD3, so that way I can spread three instances on my three availability domains. Uh, if you just have one availability domain on a region, then of course that's going to be one option available for you here, and then all the machines will be associated to that specific AD, right? But basically you can select, uh, make the selections here of which AD you want to place uh, your, your machines. Right, so I'm going to add another one. I have three ADs. I'm going to place on AD3 using the same uh, VCN and same subnet. Okay. All right. So that means each machine will be created um, on, using this pool, and it will be created on each one of my availability domains on Phoenix region. Right. So let's say I want to say create an instance pool. and that will start provisioning the pool. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, it's, it's provisioning, and uh, I have instances that will be created on AD1, uh, AD2, and AD3, right? And you can see the instance configuration that were used, 
and the status of that. So it's in provisioning state uh, as of now. So once that's uh, become green, so I can see all the instances. So if I go back to the compute um, resources, and I'll be able to see my instances getting created, right? So I have three instances that's getting created right now uh, on, on my account, each one um, on a specific availability domain. Okay, so let's go back to the instance pool and then um, once all the machines are on green state, ready, then the, the pool will be uh, ready uh, as well. So if you can see here on the left side, a load balancer, right? So I have a load balancer that I'm attaching, um, I'm attaching the machines to the load balancer too. So once all the machines are up and running, the load balancer status will say active, will say uh, green, and then everything uh, will, be, uh, will be ready. So the worker, uh, the work request, uh, we can see how far we are on each of the instance. So you can see it's changing now from the percentage, right? I'm 80% on the instance pool um, from two of my machines um, and the attaching load balancer will, will happen once the, those machines are uh, up and running, okay? All right, so I can see now that all the instances is, are up and running. Uh, you can see the status here. Uh, everything is running. Um, the backend health status of the load balance is still unknown. The load balance is still uh, figuring out um, the health check uh, of it. But if I click on the load balancer, I can see there was a check attached. So all they have all the instances attached to to my load balancer, right? So there you go. Now if I want to do, I can do some actions. I can create an outscaling configuration of it. I can, if I said stop all the machines uh, uh, on that pool. Um, or stop if I if I reboot all the machines will reboot it at the same time if I terminate it all the machines will be terminated as well so you can see this is the uh, this is the uh, information of my pool so if I click edit I can actually increase the amount of instances so if I select four now another instance will be created uh, as well and just put it up on the pool so I can I can manually go and just edit this information and add more instances to the pool okay yeah this is an overview i hope you like it um and then stay tuned for the next session we're going to talk about out scaling and then um give an overview how you use uh, instance pool with auto scaling and just uh, automatically uh, scale up and down uh, your environment okay thanks for watching